So I'm going to start off talking about federated microblogging with a new uh, system called Mastodon. So let's first talk about what is microblogging. It's basically short posts. So think of it as it's kind of like three times the size of an SMS. Uh, I think it's the same size as what Twitter does nowadays if you, if you twit things. Um, it's intentionally limited to short posts with minimal formatted options that basically they're wanting just places for people to have conversations. Uh, it does allow for links and pictures and animation, um, but there's not a whole, there's no rich, rich text and that's, in, uh, that's intentional. Uh, this is a description of Mastodon from the uh, guy that started it. I'll, let, I'll give you a second to read that. Uh, he's packed a lot into that, that paragraph or that sentence. All right. So keys to me in this is it's decentralized. It means it's not one place. One little guy, one or one guy does not get to decide what you get to post or what you don't get to post, right? So you can have your own little enclave and things and, and, and uh, uh, do not have to worry about some central group censoring or deciding what's allowed or allowing things that you'd prefer not to be allowed, right? It is a social media platform. So we call it federated microblogging, uh, but he got tired of explaining what that means. So he started calling it a social media platform. Um, but one of the keys is that, as he is here, the users are in control in a lot of different ways. And we'll talk about why that's important for the, the decentralization, the feder federation aspect of it, gives us a lot more control over the social media environment that we, we work with. It's free software, which of course is important for us, but I think it's important for a lot of other things. Part of it is it's, if it's decentralized and federated, but nobody can get a hold of it, or it's doing things under the hood that you don't know about, that doesn't work. You need to be able to be free software so people can audit the code, so people can modify it to do the things that they need to do. Uh, one of the guys has been running his, uh, uh, his own uh, node for a lot while that just tells us what li music he's listening to when he's in the garage working on stuff. And he's out buying, uh, uh, sp he's spending hours on the weekends driving around California buying Sinclair's and older computers from the, from the early 80s so he can play with them. And then he gets Mastodon running on them. So he's telling us, you know, posting to, so, to modern social media from, from this old, these old systems uh, uh, using, because it's free software. So you can get it compiled and get it working somehow. I don't want to know how. I don't. <laughs> but I think that's awesome. And if, if he's got the, yeah, he's got a ZX, yes, he's, he, he's, he's out hunting for firmware and, and, and mainboard modifications that people made 30 years ago so he can get more resources for his, for his system so he can add a serial port. And, oh. so, but he, he's having a blast. I'm like, hey, good for him. You know? um, his, uh, uh, his, his wife got upset with, with him because he was, said he was going to move everything out into his lab in the garage. And she's like, you're not running my my website off of this 1984 laptop. <laughs> so, amazing. Anyway, uh, so I highly, if you, if you start doing Mastodon, I highly recommend uh, following him. He's easy to find. All right. Uh, so you can, you can run your own. You can do things. Uh, it's, it's a global network, but it allows, since it's federated, different people can run different nodes. And so communities can run their own nodes. So um, actually, one of the announcements I forgot to mention, it's EFF. Please remind me between presentations. We'll get back to it. Um, but uh, they're thinking about running their own node for EFF-related stuff, which is pretty cool. So they can, they can do that. We'll actually get into why it's important to run your own node for that type of a, uh, of a group. Uh, and then uh, one of the keys that, that's in here, uh, the, uh, Gargan wrote a really nice post the, uh, uh, last week about the anti-abuse tools that he's designed into the system. Uh, things that don't exist in, in Twitville. All right. So first of all, you can join, right? It's, it's freely available. Uh, there are instances out there. We'll talk about those in a second where you can join. You don't have to run your own instance. You can join somebody else's instance and take advantage of the community that's already there. Uh, so what does federation mean? Uh, I should have included decentralized, which, which was from his definition. It means you have many providers. Right, so you have a choice of different places you can go to. 
Uh, there is no centralized authority. There's no one person that decides what's allowed in the Fediverse or not. Uh, and then from that instance that you're on, you can interact with other instances. So I look at what is one of the, the, the most common services we use, that we still use today, that is federated. And that would be email, right? Back in the day, if you were on, Com on CompuServe, you could only talk to people on CompuServe. That was not federated. You had one group that decided whether or not you could talk to people. You couldn't talk to people on a different network. Right? At some point, I think they fixed it. But for the beginning, there, there was this isolated island where you could only talk to people within that group. But regular email, anybody had an email address anywhere in the world, barring a few government things, you could email to. right? And it still works that way. I have an email address, and I can send that to, send email to anybody. Anybody can send me email, right? Spammers prove that every day. So federated, the same type of thing. It's, you don't have to be on the same instance that I'm in. You don't even have to be on Mastodon. You can use something else. We'll talk about interacting with other groups. Um, and you can still message back and forth. And you can still control and have access to your data uh, instead of somebody else ha uh, having full control over it. So federation means that there isn't a central authority that you can run your own instance, other people can run your own instance, so you can use your ISP's instance, you can use the EFF's, EFF's instance, you can uh, join an instance for a car club, you can join an instance for people who are really into My Little Pony but only on Thursdays, whatever it is that, that is of your interest, you can go there. So this is a screenshot of the, of the default web UI, the web client. Uh, so it's basically broken into four pieces. On the left, in, in the large areas where you can make, you can you can uh, uh, create messages. The next column is the home. Actually, I think I've got this listed here. So the next column where it says home, that is your timeline. These are the things that that have been posted from people you're following, or that were directly messaged to you, or anything that would be in your individual timeline. Uh, the second column is notifications. So that's things about, hey, this person liked your thing, or this person tried to send you a message, that type of stuff. And then the third column th is not the way I'm using it, but by default, it is the local timeline for the instance that you're on. In my particular case, what I've gone is I've set it up to where that column is messages I'm looking at where I'm reading, trying to read the entire thread. So it's like, oh, this guy posted about something interesting. Let me go look at that thread. And, and see other posts from people that I would not normally see or that I want to, if I want to read it as, as it came in. Uh, some features, uh, as I said, you can include images. I think that slide, oh, no, this one, oh, yeah, the, down at the very bottom there's a picture there. But you can include images. It does uh, GIF 89As and, and some types of video stuff. I haven't explored with it too much because, you know, I, everybody knows I'm the ASCII guy. I don't do the graphical stuff so much. Um, one of the things that it adds, this is awesome and that I found was missing in other things. And I don't use Twitville, um, but it, I know it doesn't have the per post privacy. Um, but I, when I used Identica and, and, and status.net, it didn't have this as well or didn't have it in, 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 in such an easy way to, way to use. So per post privacy, you, so you can decide the privacy of an individual post as opposed to just for your account all the, you know, in one small swoop. Uh, and then you could also do a content warning, which I think is, is really awesome. So we'll get to that. So the per post privacy, I brought that up on the, uh, uh, so you can see it from the user interface. So public means that when you post this, anybody that can get on the web or get to the site can go see it. It will show up in timelines for people on other instances. It's available worldwide, right? Uh, unlisted means that you don't pub post it publicly, but people can still find it. Right, so it's, it's still in your, your timeline. Uh, followers only means it's basically a direct message only to people who are, are actually following you. So it won't show up in your public timeline, won't show up for normal for people to, to run into, but if they're following you, you can send that. So this to my followers, hey, I'm going to be doing whatever, right? And then a direct message means it's, a, it's a, a direct line just to the people that were included in the message. So if I, if I send it to one person, only two of us are getting it, me and the person I'm sending it to. Uh, if I send it to two other people, then there are three of us that will see it. Now, I say that there is a caveat. Whoever admins the systems can look at the messages. The, the, uh, the, the system is not built to make it to where the administrators cannot see the messages. 
So this is not pure, pri pure privacy. It's not, it's not uh, encrypted all the way across and nobody else can look at it. But it, it is not showing up in your public timelines. Right? Um, and that's one of the advantages of being able to choose an instance is you can also choose the administrator you're working with. And is this somebody you trust to, to uh, be careful with your messages? Or is this somebody you think that is just going to randomly take everything you do and, and start posting them on, on billboards around town, right? So, um, all right, oops. So that's the privacy. Uh, then the uh, content warning, the CW. Uh, that is a way of saying, hey, I'm going to post something, uh, and it's not going to show by default. So instead what will happen is it'll, it'll say there's a, there's a, a CW here is, is what they use for mentioning content warning. And so this is for like spoilers, right? If you're talking about some TV show or some sports ball thing or whatever else, and you don't want to default have what's in there. If you're going to talk about something political or something that's controversial, so, and you think, okay, people might not want to see it, so you can do a CW on it, and those that want to can click on the thing and, and see more information. Uh, it's a good way for doing not safe for work so that it doesn't accidentally show up on somebody's screen if they're looking at you, right? Uh, or, or if they're walking by your office. So anything that you want to set up to not be displayed, bad knock-knock jokes is another thing that comes up in here, right? You, you put bad jokes in there. I'm not going to inflict this on everybody. You have to click on it, and it's your fault you said it, saw it, whatever, right? Um, but the, uh, and then once that's set, follow-up threads or follow-up posts also get the CW warning on them. And you can say what it is. So you can say like US politics or global politics or the Martians are coming. Whatever it is, you know, spoilers for blah, blah, blah show, right? Um, so you can mark what the, the, the topic is. Please do that, right? So please tell people what, you know, this, why it is, you know, or what it is that, that you're doing. Uh, you know, with, with safe stuff, you don't need to, if it's not safe for work, you don't need to describe the thing that is not safe for work, just say, <laughs> you know, uh, at least not in, in explicit detail. Um, also, uh, I, as a person that's using this, uh, I see a lot of people posting like YouTube links and stuff, and they're like, just, it's just a random YouTube link. I'm like, uh, I don't know what that is. Please tell me what it is, right? Uh, they also, you will get a lot of people reminding you if you post an image, post a description for it that shows up for the alt text for the people who can't see the image. Um, because there are people who can't see it. Whether that be physically they can't see it or they're you know, basically using a client that doesn't allow them to see it. Um, but anyways, so, so CW is a really, uh, really nice uh, feature. I have no idea if other things use it. I, it's the first place I've seen that actually has this built into the, to the system. But I don't use those other spyware things. All right. Uh, so, they call posts toots. <laughs> you know, the other ones call it twits or tweets or whatever they call it. In, 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 in Mastodon, when they call it, we call it a toot. Uh, so anyway, so that's, you'll see, see people saying that they're tooting something. That's what they mean. All right. So privacy abuse and harassment controls. Uh, I actually, the, the Gargan's post about this really made me happy. I knew about some of these things but I didn't understand how they work. I still might not understand the technical details, but I was glad to see uh, the, the work that he's put into and the, des and the design he's put into to uh, uh, help work on abuse problems so that they don't get out of hand on, on, the, uh, on the network. Uh, so one, you have per provider acceptable behavior. So the provider that I'm using is in Germany. Uh, it's actually Gargron's uh, uh, instance, I was using a different one before, but I've moved to his, uh, and he has to follow European law. So he's, he's in Germany, and so his instance follows German law. He has, he's also following French law, I don't know why, but you know, he's doing that. So things that are illegal in those countries aren't allowed. So you can't deny the Holocaust on his instance. He will go through and delete those because they're not acceptable. And if you're doing that, and it continues to be a problem, he will remove you from the instance. Say, go away and go somewhere else. I mean, you're free to go somewhere else, but you can't do that here, right? So you can say what your acceptable behavior is per instance, and you c the administrator can then act on that within that instance. Now, if you also have you know, the, the Holocaust didn't exist instance and wants to start posting this stuff to people on his instance, he can go, that's illegal here, and just block that instance altogether. We'll get to the, the, the per, per block, uh, different blocks and stuff as well. So it's nice that you can then choose 
the place, the, you know, the place that you want to, to be and choose the societal behaviors that you'd like to have. And if you can't find one that has the things you like, you're free to set up your own instance and, ha and have yours. Uh, so you've got a short route to the admins because you're, you've, instead of having you know, 5 billion people working on, you know, on one single centralized instance, you, have, you, know, you can work on an instance. Uh, the one I'm on is one of the largest instances. So there's tens of thousands of people on it or maybe even hundreds of thousands at this point. And if I find that I'm not getting enough response from the admins for people that are coming in and harassing me, I can switch to a different instance and, and have less admins. I can set up my own instance. That doesn't necessarily get, get me around dealing with the people who are harassing me because now I have to do it. But you know, you've got those options. Uh, you also have a smaller ratio to the admins. So you've, instead of having 4 billion people and, and a few people on the back end, you can, you can work with an instance that has uh, less people and more people working, you know, working to maintain the system. You have the local spam and abuse control, like, like I was describing. So the local administrators can go through and enforce the, what their local rules are. Um, one of the things that was interesting, uh, and, I, and I'm linked to, to Gargan's post, uh, a blog post about, this, uh, about the abuse controls, uh, is he intentionally does not allow message quoting. And his thing for it was is that most of the time that message quoting is used in this type of messaging system is to immediately blast somebody, you know, quote them and yell at them. And he's like, by, making the, by not having the quote there, so you've got to think about context or you've got to think about going through and copying and pasting and stuff on your own, he's getting people to just to slow down a little bit and be less of a problem. So he's finding, apparently, uh, and the other admins are finding that not allowing quoting is actually helping with people regulating themselves and being less of a, 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 of a uh, quick to, to anger type of thing. Maybe they're still quick to anger, but they're not so quick to posting. Uh, and then, as, this, as I said earlier, you've got per post privacy controls. So I can send private messages, also the, the content warning where I can go through and, and, and hide them from, they're not hidden from people, but they're not displayed by default. So people can skip over them if they're not interested. Uh, so blocking. So one of the things, what happens if you do have somebody that's, that's spamming you or, or sending you messages you don't want? want? Well, you can, you can do unfollow, unfollow them, essentially, and you can block them or mute them. Now, blocking them, they know that you've blocked them. You're like, I told you to stop, go away, right? And they'll get a message that says you've blocked them. But you can also just mute, mute them, and then they don't get a message that, they're, that they can't send you messages anymore. You just, it just goes to dev null. Go away, I never want to see this stuff again. Uh, and you can do that for, per individual. Uh, you could also mute a conversation. So let's say you started a post uh, and you're tired of, of hearing about whatever happened in that show three weeks ago because you've now watched two more episodes. So you can mute that conversation so you stop getting follow-ups from people who are just catching up to you, whatever. Right? Uh, you can hide a domain altogether so that that doesn't come in. Uh, and then coming soon, and actually coming soon might have been a couple days ago because he just had a release. Uh, He's adding text filters, so you'll be able to filter based on keywords and, and stuff. Uh, oh, I forgot to add this in here. Uh, it's one of the other things he did for, for content control is there is no indexing of the messages all together. There's no way on the server side to search all the messages. Um, so you can't basically Kibo yourself or your company and start jumping in on things. Now, they, they do allow hashtags. And they index the hashtags, but they don't index the rest of the message. Uh, so you can't search on it that way. And part of it is to, to get it to where you don't have instant global phenomenon with things. They're wanting to keep things, keep things more local to that instance, not necessarily local ge uh, geographically. Uh, now for moderation, uh, one of the things that, that, that for that is you have to let people know if somebody's harassing you or if somebody's doing things that don't meet the community guidelines, the, the, the admins aren't looking at every message that comes through. They don't have a global search. They can't go through and look at all that stuff. So if you see problems that are not meeting the community standards for the instance you're on, you need to report those offenders to the admin. Now, if you see something that somebody that's not meeting the standards from another site or that's sending you harassing mail from another site, you can report the offenders to, to the admins for the other site. The message from the blog message or a post from Gargon will mention if you do that, please give them information about which message it is. So tell them which message it is so they don't have to go through and try to read the entire timeline for the person that, that 
uh, you're reporting on, then they can talk to their local user. So Activity Pub. One of the things that makes all this possible is Activity Pub. Uh, this is a W3C standard uh, that Chris Weber, who has also started a, a Media Goblin, for those of you who know that, and Evan Pomerodoro, I can't remember his name, who created status.net and pump.io and a couple of other people worked on. And it's basically a mechanism for allowing one publishing system to talk to another publishing system. So uh, as it turns out, uh, uh, we'll get there, Mastodon is not the only microblogging system using ActivityPub. Uh, and there's, a, there's another one that I'll mention at the end. Well, you can then post between those two, two systems. So from, uh, um, in fact, actually uh, just came out as an announcement today, today GNU Social is now using ActivityPub for authentication. So I can go through and subscribe to a GNU Social uh, account to follow them from within Mastodon and vice versa. So you don't have to, I don't, if, if I decide that, that this guy in Berlin is really annoying me and I don't like his software at all, I can go use a different software that's also doing ActivityPub and still get the same effects and still in interact with people who are using Mastodon even if I am not doing so directly myself. Uh, and then there are other services, not just microblogging. We'll get, I'll get to some of those. All right. So choosing a server. At joinmastodon.org, uh, and blog.joinmastodon.org is where the blog post was. But joinmastodon.org, uh, you can go through and say, hey, I am interested in getting an account. And it'll give you a, a, a drop down where you can say, hey, this is the type of thing I'm interested in. So I chose for, for, the, for the example here to choose sysadmin. Most of you know that I'm a system administrator, have been for much of my life. Uh, and then I chose English uh, instead of German, yes, but I figured you guys could read the English part better. Um, so I chose those two and I said, here's some different servers that, that might be in there. Now, I know from experience, some of them are just generic servers that end up in the list and you, you just get lumped in with other things. But there also might be, so for instance, they also have, I'm interested in privacy. I'm is interested in you know, uh, 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 politics. I'm inter interested in um, horses or dogs. There was some, some animal that was there that was, that was a possibility too, right? So you've got these things. You've got different languages. And, it, and um, in some cases, like I, I had put down uh, at one point, uh, I was interested in cars and speaking German. And it came back with, oh, yeah, here's this, just the one that, that we recommend to everybody. It didn't have anything specific for that particular combination. But if it had, that would have been really cool had that been what I was actually interested in. I was just testing it. But you know. uh, So anyway, so you can do that. But also, if you know people that are on a particular instance, you want to say, oh, OK, like, let's say everybody in Plug wanted to be on a particular interest in instance. We could all create accounts on that particular instance. Uh, clients. So the Mastodon web UI, the web interface, is the, the, the interface I showed you earlier in the presentation. Um, that is uh, customizable. I haven't done too much with it, but it's, it's customizable as well. So you can have different columns. Uh, I've, I've mostly left, left it the way they've got it. Uh, Tusky is an Android application. It's the one I use. There's a couple of other ones. I have used Mastolab in the past. It, didn't, it wasn't doing what I needed to, which is why I moved over to Tusky. Uh, Tusky is also available in the F-Droid uh, um, repository. So you can get it as it's free software. Um, so you can get it directly from F-Droid. Uh, without any extra things in there. It is available through the Google application store, whatever they call it nowadays, Play Store. Um, and it's actually available in the Play Store before it's in, in F-Droid. The reason is because when they submit it, they, they say, okay, we're done. And they've submitted it into, into Android and it's gone through all the checks there and, and some other things that they do. Then t uh, the F-Droid group takes it and they recompile it and do some testing on their own. So it actually ends up generally in the Android store a couple days before it ends up in the, F in the F Droid store. I'm still getting it from F Droid because I'd like to, to be more sure, certain that it's, that it's actually compiled from the source code versus having ex extra th stuff thrown in there because uh, I don't need spyware. We have plenty of that already. Um, there's the Amarok for iPhone. I was talking to somebody yesterday who said that Amarok wasn't quite working right. Uh, and then they also annoyed me because Amarok with a K is the media player for KDE. So, you know, <laughs> choosing a, a like sounding name for a completely different thing. Uh, and then I ran, I just did a search and, and ran into Whalebird, which is available for multiple platforms, desktop platforms. 
So it does Linux, Mac, and, and uh, Windows is what they were listing. Uh, I don't know if it does BSDs and things like that as well. Um, but actually, if we come back to here, the bottom one on the, uh, on the sign up for the, for the screenshot I did is a BSD network. So for the BSD guys, there's a go place to go hang out. Uh, I can't, can't read from here if it, how many people they say they've got on there. But Oh, yeah, you can. Uh, 501. So you could be 502 for BSD if you want to. All right. Uh, and then I've mentioned a couple times, you can run your own instance, right? So you can make it what you want. If you've got, if you've got a group, you're like, hey, the Sunday morning park family people, whatever, right? You want to go create your own instance. You want to create an instance for your local uh, community around the park that you go to or you, for the, the, the people that go hang out at a particular Irish pub on, on uh, Wednesday nights, whatever, right? So you can go create your own instance and set that up. Um, you can, it's free software, so you can go through and make changes to it. There are some people that are doing that. Uh, Gargoyne, I know, has taken, taken changes upstream. Uh, and I'll mention another instance, uh, uh, or another uh, microblogging tool uh, that uh, says that well, part of the reason for this other microblogging tool is it's simpler. The, the uh, uh, Mastodon setup includes a whole bunch of different uh, uh, things, services that you have to set up to run in order to run it. And the other one's like, yeah, we'll just do it with two services and be good. So um, you also have your choice in complexity of the environment you want to use. Uh, so Plurama is the other one that I was talking about. Uh, so they Plurama, and they also do Plurama FE, which is front end. Uh, and then the kind of cool thing is uh, they actually can use the Mastodon front end for their back end. Because like, yeah, it's just doing API calls, and we support the API. So yeah, go ahead and use that if you want, right? Um, so that's also doing the microblogging, activity pub, compatible with Mastodon. Uh, but again, uh, you know, the, the claim that, that the developer of that is saying is that it's a much simpler service to set up and run on your own. Um, and then Plume is a blogging interface that's coming up, so for longer ty type of text. Uh, part of it is, uh, I, I don't pay attention uh, too much, but I guess uh, Medium is a, is a common blogging form thing that people use. Last time I looked at something was Lime Gerbil was still around or whatever that was called. Um, and um, they've recently changed how they're doing things and they're throwing people off and, and the community is getting rather upset at them. And I think that's where Bloom came from is so you can have a common blogging uh, platform people can use. But it's still doing, micro, it's, it's still doing activity pub. So the thing that they're talking about is you do your long form blog on Plume, but then the comment section is Mastodon, so, which, is, which is pretty cool. Uh, and it's, that's the type of thing I've been wanting to see for a long time. Uh, PixelFed is, is uh, uh, meant to be a uh, uh, image sharing uh, network, so replacing uh, Instagram or those types of things. Uh, and then PeerTube, as you might be able to guess, is, is meant to be a YouTube replacement where you're running your own instance and, 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 and people are sharing videos. Uh, one thing, though, the, the, the PeerTube people is they did not put the effort in to community behaviors like Gargon did for, uh, um, for Mastodon. And so they've been getting a lot of, of f feedback on that. Some of it, I guess, apparently unpleasant. I've, I've been staying out of the drama because I don't care about the video stuff so much. Um, but amongst the things that they didn't do was, how do you deal with people who are abusive? So what happens when all the YouTube commenters show up on this interface? You know? uh, so they did not put those in, in place. They, didn't have, they don't have controls for for you to have uh, community standards or for you to enforce the community standards. They don't have to also don't have controls for you to say, I'm going to run an instance, but you can't put these types of videos on my particular instance. Or if I get see something that I don't, I don't want on my instance, I don't have a way of deleting it. And those types of controls you need to ha have. right? Um, but the nice thing is they got that feedback, and, and they're, they're like, oh, we should add that. And they're starting to, to do it. Do it a little bit slower than some people wanted. Um, but it's free software, so you can participate in the community. You can put pressure on them and, and stuff. Just be nice about it, right? We can be, we can be pleasant when we're out there. All right. Uh, and some ways of contacting me if you're interested. The first, of course, is my uh, Mastodon account. Uh, as I say, I'm using uh, uh, Gargon's uh, one, of, one of the ones he set up. I think he's got multiples, but Mastodon.social. It is one of the larger instances, being that the founder is the one running it and so forth. Um, but you can go through and, and, and uh, join any Mastodon instance 
and interact with people on other instances. All right, any uh, questions? Yes? It sounded like all admin activities and moderation are annual. Like a person has to respond to an abuse report and act on it. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I, I do know that a bunch of the people who are running instances are sysadmins, geeks, DevOps, etc. So even if Mastodon doesn't have tools, I'm betting they're creating them. Um, but I, I presume it does. I, I've not, I'm not an admin, and I know that they've got an admin dashboard where they can look at stuff, but I have no idea what's in it. So, um, but I know that, for instance, as an admin, because I've, I've seen them talking about uh, um, uh, uh, dealing with abuse or, or dealing with complaints, uh, that the admin can then pull up a particular user's timeline and see things. And like one of the things that they can see is they can see the direct messages. So if somebody has sent you a direct message and you know, threatened to hurt you, the admin can see that from their interface. Um, but I don't know, I, I can't give you specifics. You get one instance of brigading and that falls apart. You what? Brigading is what happens to people on Twitter, where one person gets all of their followers to uh. attack someone, and you know, a thousand people take up to someone. So, yeah. So I, I know that there that that's so I I've, I've mentioned Twitter a few times I'm trying not to for the most part because it's such a it's such a mess um, but that is one of the particular things they're trying to work on is to not have those problems and not have one tone deaf person running the organization and not listening to their users um, but uh, I don't as I say I don't know exactly what they've done um, I have seen people say they're getting a much better experience. Um, but it's, it's uh, I don't know numbers, I know, and I don't know what the interface is like. Joe, you had a question? Well, yes, thanks. Um, I'm in a group I can visualize this would be a really useful tool. Mm -hmm. But is there any experience with non-technical people using it, like a group of older? There, there are a lot of non-technical people using it. Um, there are, um, so let, just say there are things that are legal in Germany that are not legal in the U.S. Right? That that have non-technical people beyond it, and they're doing just fine on Mastodon, uh, from what I understand. I don't interact with some of those crowds very much, um, but uh, there are uh, plenty of non-technical people there. Uh, we actually have uh, several uh, um, art instances that are up there and doing stuff, and we certainly have some technical artists within the within the community. But there are a lot of artists that don't know what a command line is and probably never will, uh, that, are, that are flourishing and apparently doing fairly well. Uh, some of them are finding gigs by doing this, so getting, you know, going through and doing stuff. Um, I, you know, I haven't tracked everything that's happening on, the, on, on it. I don't have time for that. Um, but I know there are definitely tech, non-technical people using it. Your particular use inside of a classroom or something like that is one of the things I like about it because you can run your own instance and, and you can say, okay, in my case, I'm not going to peer with anybody else. This is only for within our, our group because this is for a particular group, for like a company, right? If, I, if I've got a company, I want to have an internal chat server of some sort, I can run this and set it up to where it doesn't go through and peer with other things because I don't necessarily want my internal communications to show up on billboards and YouTube comments and so forth, right? Or peer tube comments. But, um, so you, you also have that option. Um, uh, and then that might be good for a classroom, but it also might be like if you had a, uh, another class in, in California or Rhode Island or, or uh, uh, Chile that you were doing stuff with, you could set up a pen pal type of thing using this, this as well, um, you know, depending on what you're doing. Or you've got uh, multiple classes because you've got daytime classes and nighttime classes. You could set up a, a system where the, the students from all the classes could interact and they could continue using it semester after semester and say, oh, I remember that, that particular error when I took that class. Let me go look at this, right? You know? um, and, and that's a way of you, uh, a, a tool for you to build community uh, using this. And um, since it's got, if, if you can make it available publicly, since it's got web clients, since it's got phone clients, you can then let, it, let people use it from the platform they want to use it from. So, all right, any other questions? Well, thank you very much.